You record on your own computer. Okay, yes. we got that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna drop off. Okay. Um, send me a text if for some reason you have desperate need for Please. tech support or or need me to okay. okay. So um have a great day. Yeah, we 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 need to figure out how to do a poll at some point, but not today. Yeah, we, we can we can we'll we'll figure we'll we'll deal with that when it comes. Okay. Thank okay. you, Jeff. All right, bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay. Welcome subcommittee members. Um would uh would you please indicate uh by yay if you approve of today's agenda? Yay. Yay. Guy. Yeah. Yay. yay. Thank you. Yay. So unanimous, check that box. Amend and approve minutes of the July 9th meeting of the NCPSS. What subcommittee? <laughs> Sub, sub, second, yay, yay. <laughs> okay, yay, yippee. <laughs> okay, done that. Um, the funny thing is that minutes now, unless Lynn uh, wants to keep doing it, for the most part, we have recordings of the meeting, so they can act as that, especially since the last two meetings were informational. Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway, that's our backup. Okay. Um, uh, conflict, conflict of interest declarations. Does anyone have a declaration of a conflict of interest? No. 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 Okay. Check that box. Discussion of recommendations in the revised 2024 recommendations in the I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um, I think what we're that it's it's um, referring to the ordinance recommendations. But yep. I th think we want to add a um, want to add an agenda item here that is um, what the heck are we going to do to move this thing off its uh, center to move forward. And um, at some point, Sarah will join the meeting and we need to be able to speak to her about how we're going to, how this is going to play out in a way that uh, is not so long winded. <laughs> yes. And, and Lynn, you alluded to it in your email about let's choose the things that we can have effect on, focus on those things. Other people, you know, she handed out printouts and people can read the ordinances if they're motivated to, but the ones that we're going to alter should be where we're focusing our attention. And it's not clear which ones those are. Right. So, and the intent of my uh, recommendation was that, um, you know, when I was listening to her at the end of her presentation, I was watching people's faces, which is the benefit of Zoom. And we had really nine people, not counting the committee in the room. I think it's important for, and Guy, I think you are the resident expert on this. So I'm looking to you, is for us to identify the two or three things. Tom's doing a great job getting the document move forward and i am deeply grateful to him for doing that particularly with health concerns and such that's just been heroic yeah but guy it would be helpful to me and i took the time when i was in nesco in last weekend to really you know go all through the community planning area in my on my bike and in my car and um it would be helpful to identify the two or three ordinance changes that we think are really critical to proceed with for um, Ron. Ron, I took the dog out. Sorry, um, <laughs> that are that are really critical to to bring forward, um, so that we can meet our deadline of wrapping this up in September, October, and and being done, and and to have a discussion around that. I was very surprised when I did my little bicycle every street in Nesco in in the village and to north, I did not go south. I did not go on my bike in the south park. 
but there are a surprising number of lots in Neskowin, um, the village, that I think people have just chosen not to develop over the years. They're either next door to their house or they're, you know, just been in the family a long time. And, um, and I think those lots become, which are very expensive, I'm sure, given Nestlin's current pricing structure, those lots could be developed into four unit dwellings um, based on Sarah's wonderful picture she drew. And at a four dwelling unit or something, you could make the purchase price make sense, right? If you turn them into condominiums or something, it would, I, again, you know, I don't think it would turn into affordable housing, um, but nonetheless, um, I do think it would be great with those, with the collective wisdom in this room and anyone else we want to really help us think this through to pinpoint the two or three things that we think are most important to bring to Sarah's attention in the form of, you know, changes or ordinances to support the updated community plan. That's, thank you for doing that. Yeah. So, yeah, so a couple of things. Um, when I went through the 2001 plan, I pulled out every possible recommendation that came out of that uh, and they're all, it's, they're not all ordinance related. Uh oh, we're losing you. We lost you, guy. Well, if he's gone for a minute or two, we, I did, he called me uh, just before the, on my way over here. And his main comment was that we may just, want a statement that says that uh, in looking ahead to all the climate change, big ocean, big storms, crazy, you know, nine months of dry weather, all those things imply that in the future, there are going to be some real challenges here. And that um, even if we can't affect the uh, a variety, oh, He's back. A variety of things. Specifically, we can say that uh, Nasquin uh, believes its priority should be housing and and little else uh, in the future. So it'd be a general statement of saying housing will be a priority in the uh, as changes occur in the future. We want to the uh, housing to be the focus of development and. Uh, so, Guy, you can tell me if I misrepresented you, but uh, and welcome back. Are you there? All right. Sorry, guys. I went through a bad area. But um, so a couple of thoughts. And, and Lynn, you could maybe help with this. So in, in the start, every uh, zoning ordinance starts with a purpose statement. And what we're going to get resistance and what we already got, obviously, resistance from Sarah is she's just not going to let us remove a use uh, without a fight anyways. And, okay, so can we rewrite the purpose of every, of, of R1, NESCO and R1, R, and R3 in particular, those two, I think the rural residential and and I don't think we have any R R two in our community boundary, but certainly the R one and R three. If we can rewrite the purpose in a way that strengthens the the residential purpose rather than any other use, so that's one thing. And so I haven't looked at it to see what we could do, but that's the one thing I think. And I generally talk to Sarah about this after our gathering at the gallery the other night and she was in a hurry to leave and like grand you know that architect had her ear listening even when i was trying to talk to her so um the other thing is that there's something put something in the values and vision statement i don't know where i think i maybe fooled with a little bit 
uh, when Tom sent out that thing and I had some thoughts about changes there, which I didn't, I didn't do, but I thought we could strengthen the residential nature of the, of the R1 and R3 zones. Uh, and, and so that's another place. The other thing that I, um, and I, I sent it, I responded back to Tom over the weekend uh, and I sent a copy to admin because I guess we can't communicate as a team here that, you know, Tom had that statement in about mitigating for climate change. And I said, you know, we, first of all, we don't have the ability or authority to mitigate in the way the government uses the term mitigate, it means that, you know, we're going to make up for the damage we're doing over here with something over there that will mitigate that damage. And that's not really what we want to do in NESCO. And what we want to do is adapt to the potential changes that climate change will bring. So I was telling Rand earlier, and I, and I, wrote, I wrote out a new statement in our, I think it's in our vision statement, that what Neskowin wants to do is help our community prepare for the coming changes from climate change, not only from rising sea levels, which, you know, it's, it's one thing which we, did to, we kind of already dealt with with the coastal hazard overlay zone. But the other thing is the predictions for this part of the coast are increasing storms uh, over a longer period of time, increasing storm uh, intensity, uh, longer, hotter periods, you know, uh, longer periods without rain and water. So my thought was, and I wrote Sarah over the weekend saying, you know, you spent some time talking about uh, building codes. And I said, in re and, and when I wrote her, I said, in response to Lynn's concerns, what is it that we can really do here to make a difference? Could we make recommendations and changes in our building codes so that future buildings or remodels or whatever are going to prepare homes, building structures for the changes that are anticipated over the next 30, 40, 50 years? So I didn't hear back from her. <laughs> so so um, thanks for that, Guy. And you can respond, you can send it to everyone. You just have to send it through the BCC, through the blind uh, copying in, and then people need to respond individually back to you. So it's you oh. that that way you're sending it to each individual and they send it back to you instead of us having a group discussion. But that's that's the way it's facilitated, just for you, FYI. Well, so when I get to a place later today, I'll send you guys individual. Would I recommend it to Tom for changes? Okay, thank you. Because so. one of the things that I think we have the opportunity to do with what Tom's done is, you know, I, well, two things. One is that one of the things we know is there's going to be more and more water, period. There's just gonna there's gonna be more and more water in Nesquin, not and on the hillsides too, but it'll run down the hillsides, and so um, part of what is interesting to me is it, you know, and then of course if there's a tsunami, there's gonna be less and less land, right? So the 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 basic part of Nesquin goes into the ocean, um, and all things are changed forever, and that'll be the least of our problems if there's a tsunami. I mean, I, I know everyone right. likes to talk right. about all the wonderful things that can happen, but um, but the, a lot of that is wishful thinking, I think. But um, uh, so I think Tom has given us this document. And to me, one of the things that's, that we should be thinking is, and, and it goes to your point, Guy, if it is strengthen the nature of R1 and R3, let's get some language down in that. Let's, we, I think we're really ready to move to language um, and to yeah. get things in writing because that's the discipline that allows us, A, to get across the finish line, 
but B, it's where the rubber meets for the road for people's conceptions and, and beliefs and hopes. One of the things that we know right now, and I didn't know about this till I was at the beach this weekend, but the county on so many levels is overwhelmed. And I think it was interesting when I was listening to Sarah talk about, you know, the kind of all the arcane parts of development codes and even building codes. I sat there and I thought, well, this is a county that, that can't maintain roads right now, as people keep mentioning in our meetings. And also is, you know, there's pen, there's outstanding litigation in Nesco win about that whole question of uh, Hawk Road being privately owned or publicly owned and what does that mean for the sewer and stuff and that's not part of this conversation that hasn't come into us from any direction probably because the people are so busy trying to solve for it or trying to address what's going to happen will there be more litigation what's going to happen so one of the things is i think if we move to language and put it out there particularly when we've got time i don't think we're going to get a lot of people's attention from here through August. I just, it's, you know, there's only so many sunny days in Oregon, even with climate change. And I think we're not gonna get people's full attention, but I think if we worked on getting the document where we're happy with it in August, and then released it in September and said it with draft written all over it, I think we will meet our deadline and being done. And it is really pivotal to me you know, what Sarah thinks, if anything, the county can do on anything. I mean, I, I that is really her job to tell us because, and I don't mean in a punitive way or in an accountability way. Um, and I mean in a, in a, we don't want to write a bunch of pie in the sky stuff, Sarah, that's never going to get addressed. And if it is, it's going to be five years from now when the world will have changed yet again. And so um, that's kind of, as I was thinking, as I was driving around and riding my bike, I thought, you know, Sarah's pretty much said, we can't do this. We can't do that. It might lead to a takings question. It might lead to any number of things. Climate change can go many ways. I will tell you that we were when we were adding a garage to our house, um, the contractor actually, and it complied with the development standards, but the contractor was really innovative about, you know what, with the levels of water we're now projecting, um, here's what we need to do to make the water go through the um, garage and, and goes in the right direction that you want it to go. And... There's all this engineering they did to make the driveway. It's it's slightly tilted so that the water goes. I mean, I was like, well, gosh, these people are way ahead of the curve um, from what I thought we could do. So so at least the, what I know current building standards allow them to think that way. I'm not saying they all do, but but I was shocked at how much time and effort went into here's the here's all, and and again the tsunami wipes it all out so it doesn't matter. But the but water, just the water getting greater and greater, here's what we can do to help you with that. So my bottom line is, I think, Guy, if, the, if there are ways that you want to strengthen R1 and R3, I think the we did see at the meeting before this last one, there are some people who are struggling with the kind of state housing law but it's the law i mean i don't they can be frustrated with it but i'm not sure there's anything specific to that that we can influence or affect at this point um and sarah to her credit did a great job and it's on video any property owner who wants to understand what that new state law does sarah was pretty thorough and exhaustive in describing every single thing and part of what I heard as I sat and listened to her and took notes was Nescoin's already got a whole bunch of stuff in place that really helps us in, turn of our, in terms of our community values in the face of that law. So I took that as a gain already that kind of randomly we're, we're already at the cutting edge of maintaining what everyone loves about Nescoin 
while this law is implemented, if in fact it is, because it requires the developer to come in and, and do it. So that's just kind of where I am as I, on, a, on one hand, I'm pleased we're further than I thought we were, almost without even trying. But on the second hand, I thought we really need to put something in writing so that Sarah can respond directly to that. If Sarah says to us, we put something in writing for R1, and Sarah says, you know, you guys can put that in there, but you don't have a snowball's chance of getting it through because it's a takings or it's a this or a that. We've got our answer. And I, right. And, and I think the other uh, part of that, and, and if you're all willing to wait, I'd love to have a shot at drafting that. It's going to be next week. Uh, and uh, now I have some thoughts about how to draft the language. Uh, for R1 and R3, and you know, on the on the takings piece, um, there might I, I might be thinking that the county. I know the county has no money to defend anything anymore. I mean, they they spent a lot of their legal expense money on the SCR thing fine, that's great, that probably weren't needed to go. Uh, and then Lynn, if you saw the report out of the county commissioner's meeting about a week or so ago, they're projecting about a $15 million hole over the next three to five years. Uh, they, they, they had a meeting presenting 50 different ideas about how they could either raise money or cut expenses. I think there were three ideas to cut expenses and 47 to raise money. Um, so they're hurting. Financially, yeah. the county is really hurting. And you're right about they they're just they have no appetite at all, primarily because of financial, to take on any kind of Measure 56 claim. So one of the ideas, and kind of hinted this with Sarah, is that if, let's say, and I, I said, you know, here's here's one of my concern. On Breakers, there's an empty lot actually right where Hillsboro runs into Breakers. There's an empty lot uh, on the beach that it reminds me of what happened in Tierra del Mar. And, you know, in Tierra del Mar, Facebook came along and paid an exorbitant amount of money for that lot so they could put an international uh, transmission line cable. And we're in prime air, uh, prime territory for those cables to, to go across the uh, Pacific. So I said, you know, what would it take in terms of language in our ordinance? And, and I'm pretty sure that's zoned R1 to say, you know, we're going to exclude power stations or whatever. I can't remember even the 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 way the planning commission interpreted the language of the ordinance there, uh, which I think a lot of people misunderstand. There is a lot of interpretation that goes into uses under these uh, ordinances, and you would think there wouldn't be, but there are. And Tierra del Mar is a prime example. There is no use that says you can have an international cable running off of your property, you know, um, but they, they linked it to, if it were PUD running a, a, a little power thing there. So all I'm saying is that there might be things that would have very, very low risk of, a, of somebody coming with a measure 56. And even if they did drop it, just tell the county, We'll take a chance. Here are the three or four things we don't want to see listed as uses. And if anybody files a measure 56, okay, we'll drop it. Don't don't defend it. Just remove it. But mm -hmm. maybe that's too Pollyanna thinking. But um, anyways, so I'd like to see some still some ways of thinking about this, uh, knowing that the county will not will not defend any claim. So. And Guy, so two things. Yeah. One is the county can't, if if we say, you know, we'll drop it, we're not a, 
we're not a corporation. We're not an entity that has the, you know, I mean, they'll, our membership can change over time. We don't own shares of anything. And it's really, it would be really hard for them to count on us to drop anything that's, that doesn't, that's difficult to do. I'm not gonna say impossible. Um, but one of the things that the county can't do, and I think this is why they are, there is so intent on this, is they can't escape all litigation. I mean, even if they say, we don't wanna do anything that's gonna cause a lawsuit, that doesn't mean there won't be a lawsuit. You know, because they don't control yeah, the right. yeah. lawsuits. And so, yeah. so, you know, it's kind of like I can understand why they're trying to control it. I can, I definitely understand why they're in a hole. Um, and that has lots of things to do with things beyond our control. But I guess one of my questions would be right. is that lot that you're talking about, do, do we know? I know in Nesco and North, we have some people who own lots who, the lots are in trusts for preservation. So they're never going to be developed. The people have decided that that's kind of their gift to NASCO in that um, the lots in a trust into perpetuity as a vacant lot. Do we know about that one on the, cause, cause it looked like they were doing dune management on that lot. Like they were really putting effort into growing um, the proper kind of grass, et cetera, to hold the dune. Do we know if that lot is in a trust and is never going to be developed? I, my understanding uh, is that that lot is owned by the house immediately to the south of it. Oh. And, and that house, as you may know, is one of the more active uh, short-term rentals yes. in in the whole village. Okay. Okay. Good to know. All right. I'm going to do some, I'm just going to check with some neighbors and friends, but if that's the case, then yes. And, and um, one would think that if they own that, the building next to them, <laughs> it's a big building um, that they would want to exclude power stations too. Cause that's clearly a business there. Yeah. You would think. <laughs> I'll, Anyways, yeah. well, I, if it gives you ten million dollars, it's very hard for. I mean, I mean, there are people who would just say, "Okay, that's that's. I don't even need to rent yeah. each anymore. I can just do that." Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, are we all willing to? Are you willing to wait until next week, and I I'll get out a draft, and I think I'll figure out a way to do it within the public here. You know, at least I think I could send out a draft. But you can at least look at it so that our next meeting a week from Monday, we can take up the draft. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'll, if everybody's okay, I can do that. Yeah, just copy everyone in through BCC and then it's okay. So I don't agree with that, but I also have a question about um, an issue with when Lynn brought up that there were so many vacant lots around. And actually, Sarah has brought that up before that we have more developable property than people think in Nesquin. Um, one thing that I've become aware of is that many people look at a street and they assume that the streets can stay the same way that it is. And that doesn't always happen. Houses and fourplexes get built on vacant lots and also existing houses get torn down and other houses get built on them. And I'm wondering within, and I was thinking about this more with the um, SB 406, 206, um, uh, talking about um, how increased density is gonna perhaps mean that we need to deal with some noise issues and proximity to property line issues um, to keep the character that people expect here as much as possible as far as kind of a quiet, peaceful use of your property because the lot size is smaller in some parts of Nesquin. And if you're gonna put a fourplex on when um, Sarah was talking at one of the meetings about how decks were not included in lot coverage. 
and that this one has one of the bigger lot coverage. Um, it's more generous about lot coverage than a lot of communities. If you're covering your lot right. 70%, and then also your deck does, isn't included, the deck's coming to your property line, and the house that's next door used to have a vacant lot next to it. That's a big change in how the neighbor is going to experience their property, which is totally legal. Uh, and um, really, the existing property owner next door has nothing that they can do about it. But I'm just wondering, as we discuss changes in R1 and R13, and we take them into account with the SB406, if we also need to not assume that some of the previous kind of live and let live rules about how people deal with proximity to property lines and noise and issues, if it's just a discussion that we should have and where, I'm not sure where that goes, if that goes in the ordinance or in the building code, or I'm not sure where that goes, but there's a conversation that I think people would have opinions about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, I think you've got a really good point. And one of the things, so here's the thing, the, the I don't know, Guy, you may know off the top of your head, I do not know. Um, I haven't built a new deck in a long time, but do, do the current standards in, in create any opportunity to, to require decks to be put as far away from the neighbors as possible or i mean is there any no. deck provision because because that is a big issue at the beach people are outside a lot people are celebrating a lot and you know you could have with density some really there may be some conflicts we can avoid by good planning yeah and i think sarah you know started there are several questions like that came up at the at when we had our last meeting with her uh, and she talked about decks and uh, how you measure lot coverage and how you measure setbacks. Uh, and it's and I think one of the things that she did say is it's it's not a it, it's not like a, a fixed thing yet. They, I think they still are are uh, trying to figure out, especially in dealing with decks or concrete pads and things like that that people are putting out. One of the things that that uh, this is my understanding, I may be wrong, but you know when she mentioned that Nesquin was platted before the minimum lot uh, size establishments were made for the county uh, of of 7,500 square feet, and there are a lot of lots, including the lot that we own on Hillsboro, was only 5,000 square feet, 50 by 100, and that that reason i understand it was the 70 percent lock uh coverage was because so many of our lots were 50 by 100 in the village and uh it's you know just something that we could go to as she mentioned i think oceanside and some others that do 50 percent lot coverage but people who have 50 by 50 by 100 lots, that really, really puts a squeeze on them, I think. Um, but I, that, it's building codes, Lori, where you would address that. Do we in this community planning process have anything to do with recommendations on building codes? Oh yeah, no, that's that's the thing, and that's what I wrote Sarah over the weekend. Let's let's deal with. I mean. There's no takings there. Let's deal with making some changes in the building codes. One of the, the she, you know, she mentioned the other uh, day about the how we measure building heights. That was one of the things that came out of the planning process back whenever. Right. Yep. Um. So I'd like that to be put on in the future agenda, uh, or however it is that we research and and talk about whether with the community or with a planner or with guy or whoever that we talk about what what the what other communities have done and what the possibilities are that are reasonable that makes sense when when houses are denser than they have been in the past seems like yeah. you could 
you could be specific to whether it's a 50 by 100 or it's a larger, if they're smaller lots and maybe you wouldn't count it in the 70% and if it was larger, you would count it in the, or, you know, make some allowances for small lots, but in general, keep it so that that is included and have some, you know, I don't know, that would be only in the front yard or, you know, it could be very limiting. If you live in a small lot, do you need to have a little bit of privacy and, and quiet? Also, yeah, regardless of the big lot or small lot, right? So, those those kinds of Laurie, considerations could be thoughtful, I think. Laurie, did that house that was built just being built next to you, did they combine two lots? They did. Mm -hmm. Well, no, the, the house that was torn down was in the middle of two lots, so it was a it's a hundred by a hundred lot. What? Um, there was two fifty by hundred lots that are combined, but they were always one tax lot. So, oh really? Look, do you live in my favorite house in Nesco Inn? Are you on the corner across from the golf course? Mm hmm. So, you, so your house is yeah. just stunning, and your garden is unbelievable. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. I've always loved it. Ken and Pogi Curry used to live in the little house next to you that's been replaced by the big house. Um, so in the little tiny little cottage, it was like, you know, 10 by 10 bedroom and a bathroom and, you know, but um, your house is just gorgeous. It is. Um, so that's a good thing. I think this building code discussion is good and particularly in terms of conflicts, you know, I mean, I've seen con. There's been a fair amount of conflicts over where decks are placed because it is where the people gather at the beach, and yeah. then got you know people barbecue, barbecue and sleeping, and then if it's a rental, it's a whole different issue because it's a party, and um, so when you paint it back, um, Noise, I think using it as noise control is a really good way to phrase it. That's the simplest. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. hold any negative connotations. It's just noise. And that's something that we value. Okay. Well, it sounds like we're kind of honing in on where we can have our impact. Yep. So yep. when uh, Sarah was presenting the other night, I gave away all the copies, so I couldn't make any notes on the ordinances, but there were a couple places she said, so you might consider the question of X, Y, and Z in a regard to this ordinance. But of course I had, I didn't know, I, I, I don't have any way to recall except for to look at the recording again, which I haven't done. Um, what, what those, suggestions were pertaining to what did anyone else c catch or note that that she was providing an opportunity to say this is something you could make a uh, suggestion on or make a, a uh, deliver an ordinance that provided some change to what exists now and um, I don't know if anyone else heard that but uh, I, and, I think those were what was it? Well, I, I, I thought, thought there were build, more building permits. Yeah. So one of the things I was not clear on, but it, the, but your question ran prompts another opportunity is because um, she kept kind of alluding to, well, this is really going to have a big impact on what the next step looks like with the housing bill, but you guys have already done it. And so I was keeping a list of the you know, the 70% and the 75 by 100 and all that. What I'm not clear on, and, and I got lost on because she of the level of detail she was going into, I thought that's where I kind of came away thinking, all right, all right, all right. We're not going to paint the, you know, we're not going to boil the ocean here, Sarah. What are the two or three things? You know our ordinances inside and out. Guy, you may too. I do not. But to me, it's like, what are the two or three, three, three things that we could do that are 
that are subtle, like what Lori's talking about in terms of um, avoiding noise conflicts on smaller lot sizes with placement and design. Um, what are the things we could do that would have a big impact that aren't going to cause a takings claim? And the best expert on that is probably Sarah. And I think, I, I mean, I almost think we should just call her and ask her or Guy, because you're on the planning commission, just have a conversation with her and say, Sarah, we're trying really hard not to make an issue for you and for the county. We we understand your $15 million hole over the next three to five years. And, you know, it's going to get bigger than that. I'll just tell you, so it, it, might, it would be my guess. Um, so let's um, let's find out what, it is, you know, a lot of people, when they buy lots at the beach, the lots are expensive. They don't use um, architects because they just buy a set of plans and they put it on the lot. We have, There's several houses in Neskowin where that was done. And the people around are very, very upset because the decks and everything else landed in the wrong place. You know, the perfect example is where they have a clear wall with no house blocking it and they don't even put any windows in you know it's it's just it's the plant yeah. a house on a lot don't use an architect don't conceptualize you don't even need an architect you can do it on your computer and look at what the house you love will look like on the lot you want to build on but anyway um i think we should try and find out what are the things and particularly if they're building code things that we just do them because obviously from what Sarah said, we were really smart before, 20 years ago, we did some things that no one else did and they've paid dividends. Right. So that made me think we need to think strategically about what are those things this time. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Guy, you're gonna put something together. Should we be, <laughs> I guess the conversation with Sarah, which I hoped that she would join us today so we could ask her directly and she could, tell us directly so we're not waiting for a, a comment or an opportunity to talk to her, which is hard to come by, um, to understand what, how we can do this and get, get an answer from her. I wish, I wish we could But I think we, I, Rian, I think we're going to get an answer from her. I think we just keep moving with the written document that Tom's got. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was my computer, but it, it didn't have draft on the pages, you know, and we want to be really careful. We don't get out there with something that everyone thinks someone's already adopted because we've got some time here. So let's get a yeah. draft out there. And, and that gives us about 60 days to get to tie Sarah down with guys, you know, expertise as well on what are the two or three things, two or three moves we do right now that are going to preserve the Nesco win that we all love. And that should include values that drive that. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking of things, Guy and everyone else, think of what, val you know, we have our statement of, of values about housing, but we also need to tie a value directly to any ordinance changes or building code things that we propose. And I think we can do that. They, they just need to be, can, you know, joined at, at the beginning of the process or or as soon as we can. <laughs> so um, this has been very valuable here. We have to also schedule some meetings, but maybe we want to, uh, I mean, your suggestion earlier, Lynn, was to kind of chill in August and do our own work and then present in meetings when we're together with the pieces of the puzzle to share. And that's that's um, that's seeming more seemingly more and more attractive to me rather than having meetings where Sarah goes on and on and and uh, we don't well uh, please uh, push back on that this or let me know how the U.S. committee members feel about this. I have an opinion. Yeah, go for it, Laurie. I think we should have at least one meeting in August just so that we keep the momentum of people paying attention that want to. 
And in that meeting, we could bring up things like if we get, if we input, if this one becomes more and more dense, which is inevitable. inevitable um, how do you think your life personally will be affected? And what could we do in this plan that, um, that uh, buffers the inevitable effects of more density? And have people people problem solve that if they think it's an issue. And if they don't think it's an issue, and then do they have any issues at all about becoming more dense? And if they do and it's not noise, what is it? Right. So what concerns do you have and how can we address them? And then also just say we are at the process of writing ordinances besides the concept of more density and noise and potential parking and traffic, of course we'll come up. Um, what other things do you think could improve Nesquilin by paying attention to writing an ordinance? You know, like ask people before we give them a draft that says these are the ordinances. Well, the only caution I would have there I think I think people focus with something in front of them and so even if we just put out three or four straw dogs things that off the top of our head and said you know first of all we're not going to be doing a bunch of ordinances because the county's told us not to um, but we think maybe these four things and guy, these would be your R1, R2 things. These would be our highest, highest, highest list and throw them out on the table in August with the, what do we do to buffer density? And I think we'll get feedback on that and that will help us prioritize and choose our battles. And, and I think that way people can kind of get focused. I think Lori, your language about buffering density will really resonate with people, right? So in NESCO in, you know, particularly, you know, by where Casey Joyce lives and stuff, I always remember all those cottages, they are just packed in there. They've been packed in there for, you know, six 110 years. years. Yeah, they're like that. And yeah. those people have learned how to coexist um, in some way that is remarkable. Um, and Nesco in North has probably three times as many houses as when we bought our house 42 years ago. So, so, and it is clear that some people do go to great consideration to make sure that they're in a good place and not gonna be all over their neighbors face right. and other people do not. So we've, I think, done some things over the years to try and make that more the practice. But I think if we ask people what we can do to buffer density, that would be a great question for a meeting and people will, people will be all over it. They'll say, yeah, I really think we need to do X. And I, and I do agree with you that having some examples of things for people to like read and react to is a great combination like those two things that um, and then it will give people a chance to participate before we present an actual draft for them to read and start trying to get adopted right but there needs to be at least one more place to participate okay yep so let's we have to give 10 to 14 days notice for a meeting and we don't have a meeting schedule besides our uh, meeting like this that <laughs> no one else attends. So we have to we have to pick a date that people can attend whether Zoom or in public and um, get that on the calendar so people know what's happening and give them some idea what it's going to be about. So um, maybe Maybe Laura, you and I can work I, on, um, or maybe we'll do it right now. Um, well, can I suggest we wait until we get some response from Sarah? And I know 
and I'll contact Sarah here the next day or so. Not, okay, yeah, here in, because last time we did that, it took six weeks to get. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. So well, here's the thought. I, I think if we're going to have a meeting in August, we should try as hard as possible to get as many people there as possible so we can come to closure in September, October. Yeah. And Labor Day weekend is... Labor Day is on a Monday, as always, but that's the week of August 26th. And I would suggest that if we set a meeting um, for like Thursday or Friday, the 29th or 30th, that's going to be when the village fills up with tourists, but also with people who are there and own property, <clears throat> staying in the motel, etc. So I would just kind of think if we looked at like the 29th or 30th, maybe the 28th, towards the end of the week, um, we could have a more robust meeting and it gives us time to get Sarah's attention and, and the agenda, I would keep the, I would think the agenda says, we're getting done here, here's the draft Tom's got. We wanna talk about two things. What should we be doing to buffer density and these two or three ordinance changes, what do you think? And nothing else. Uh -huh. So are we not doing anything specific for Nesquin about the SB 406? Like have we, like her presentation, is that the only thing that's discussion we're going to have? Nothing we have to, there's nothing we can or have to do. I mean, we're going to get some changes handed to us um, whenever that happens. Right, we don't even have it in hand what <laughs> so so when she kept talking about having the consultants and they were going to have these meetings and every community and stuff that just never happened just yeah. pretty much i <laughs> think that i think that my guess is and this happens sometimes is that the consultants are being used to help the county with its plan vis-a-vis -vis senate bill for <laughs> And if we had not done, I don't have the list in front of me, but if we had not done all the things we did in 2001 correctly, I think we would have a long list of things we'd be trying to get done. But I think the really good news of this whole process for me is we apparently were just, the people who did that were just way ahead of their time and were thinking about, right. you know, what would happen. And so we're in better shape, I think, than most other communities with regard to Senate Bill 406. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think, I just think that really short agenda and doing it as close as we can to Labor Day gives us time. We have our meeting, our next meeting, as I understand it, is on and frankly, I'm horrified that it's almost August. I just have no idea where the summer went. But um, our next meeting's on the 12th, I think, at two. Yeah. So that gives us plan. That gives us time to see what Guy has found out, see what we want to do with ordinances, and get ready for a 28th, 29th, or 30th meeting. Okay. And I think it's going to be at the fire hall to just accommodate where everyone knows they can go for a meeting and it'll handle if a lot of people respond to this it'll handle it michael's place can reach capacity pretty quickly if there's real interest we've we've it works do we have wi-fi at the firehall we might have to no well there it's there but it's undependable that's what alex clark said is that's, i think that's okay i mean let me just We've had we've had a lot of Zoom accessible meetings. Uh -huh. If we say in advance on our 14 day notice that we're having this at the fire hall because there may be a lot of people there and there will not be Wi-Fi and we're doing it over Labor Day weekend to make it as easy as possible. I don't think we're required to always have to have Wi-Fi and it might drive more people into the room. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not so I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Um, and, um, I think that's something we have to check with the county on. I sense this whole Zoom open meeting law thing, whatever, whatever. Really seems changed. to me that there is a requ there's a requirement to have 
uh, the remote access to every meeting. I may be wrong, but I think that's not be the case. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what she told us. Well, we've got time. I might be able to, we may be able to figure out how to bump up their Wi-Fi capability even um, if we pay for a one month plan that increases its strength or something. I don't know. Maybe the community Let me look into that. could do that for each of their yeah. general meeting weekends. Yeah. As part of their budget. Uh -huh. There's Zoom too, and that would be good for the community association. Okay, let me let me. Uh, there's a there's an upcoming meeting of the community association on which I am on the board, um, so I will I will pitch this. I also was wondering if the community association could buy one of those gizmos that Sarah has, the, the owl, owl, so that we could have a hybrid meeting without her being present, <laughs> and then we would be in control of our own schedule. Uh huh. Whether or not it's the community plan or just the NCAC, then any meeting could be hybrid. We were at our own equipment. Uh huh. And that could be a community association. I think they had a hell of a weekend. I hope they raised a hell of a lot of money because stuff, the auction things were going up 600, 2200, 1100. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. And communication is like key. That's the key purpose of the organization. Okay. Um, okay. I will get something on the uh, agenda. It's like August 3rd or something. So it's coming right up. So I think this would really resonate with most of the members too that, yeah, maybe they need to be part of being more responsible for good communications in the community. By making the power the uh, fire hall capable of having the hybrid meetings, and also have their own meetings be able to be hybrid, right? And the owl to do it as a hybrid, and they yeah, can be a good organizations like the golf course and the right, right. It could be shared. <laughs> Rand, did you win any trophies this weekend? Uh, no, Aaron's. Even though Aaron sat in for me and played, uh, oh. yeah, he covered me because I've got sciatica pretty bad in the last week. That oh, I'd never had it before, oh. and it's a painful week. Uh, but Matt's right oh, here. I'm sorry. Give him a blow by blow. No, <laughs> um, they started out great with four under, which is kind of what our first day has always been. Second day started out three under through four holes. And then it was plus one from there in. So it didn't provide any winnings. Oh, dude. Oh, well. Well, so who was it then, Aaron? We've never Alex won anything Matt? before, have we? <laughs> well, yeah, but every year the expectations rise. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't play. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think putting was yeah. pretty for everybody. And uh, there were some teams that scored ridiculous scores, especially the all women's team, because you could buy it. You could move forward a tee. And if you're already at the red tees, they put you, you know, on a par four, 150 yards away with four good women golfers. You're going to score. They scored 26 the first day and 32 the second. So yeah, they kind of killed it. <laughs> Yay, <girl>. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, enough for that update. That's not on our agenda, right? Um, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have the, um, let's see, we're gonna have, uh, we need an agenda for- oh, yeah, yeah. If you guys uh, have reviewed Tom's document, and a number of us made, uh, you know, little typographical uh, corrections, but uh, and guy, you had one on housing. I thought. Uh, any other thoughts on Tom's besides our gratitude for him getting that cranked out in the midst of all uh, his concerns? 
I have a few. I have okay. a few. They're not huge. Um, and a couple of them are more like just typo things. So I can submit Do those that to them. But one of them was I, I had an issue with his definition of safety. Safety is about taking steps necessary to prevent accidents from happening. And just looking it up in the dictionary, it said the condition of being protected from or unlikely to cause danger, risk, or injury. To me, safety is a little bit more than just preventing accidents. So I think we need to talk about that definition, not necessarily this minute, but we need to expand that. That seemed too limited to me. And then um, under the resilience one, um, he has tsunami at the very bottom the tsunami routes, emergency supply sheds and needed materials, tsunami facility, and fire protection for homes. And he did speak at all about flood risk, which we definitely have near the bridge um, and other places in Nesquin. And then um, storm intensity and drought. There's nothing there about that. So there's other resilience issues besides just the tsunami that I think justify inclusion and discussion. Okay. And there's no resilience to a tsunami. Well, he has it under resilience. Well, to prepare. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, there is through well, uh, survival support of survivors and- um, Yeah, that's it, you're right. Yeah, and I think yeah. it might have been Matt who was uh, talking to Damon about Damon being in areas of the world where there were disasters and how you know just law enforcement in a uh, with no law enforcement around burying the dead all these things that are somebody's going to have to take some control of that's a part of resilience is just surviving afterwards for three weeks when we're on the bottom of a list of people to um, support. That sobering conversations probably need to happen before too long about what that really means and how you can all of a sudden be, you could be anywhere in the world because there's no support and you have to figure it out. It's pretty scary stuff. So um, that's resilience too. And I, in I, I think the um so so and Lori, just to your question, I just want to go back one step. Tom's document goes on top of the previous community plan, or is Tom's document the whole community plan that I'm con which of those what's the they well they that was one of Lori's big concerns early on was is it replacing or is it revising? And uh, I think it was hard for Tom to see how what was there since it was brought up in every, you know, as we develop the values, we use the old values as the basis for the discussion and then discussion evolved to produce the new document. So he sees it as a revision of the original document. We might want to compare the two to see what didn't move forward uh, but isn't the new document like three pages long? Well, that's just the vision and values part of it. Oh, okay, okay. So more yeah. to come. Well, he's he's knocked out a lot of stuff that's going in the appendix that because he said it was it was uh, what tertiary or peripheral to the uh, and the purpose of the document. Right. Uh, Right. History, all those things are more like things that we can articulate in some form in the document, but it's not going to, he's revising the whole order of the document and he has presented that, but the, the vision and values is just one piece of it. So we need to review his outline of the new document. And right. he, the reason I was asking, and particularly because he's got a lot going on, is do we know when we will see the whole complete draft? No. I think I we, think so. I think so then, we ask him. Okay. He did give us the outline 
a few months ago. Right. Mm -hmm. I've got yeah, it would be awesome if we could go through that together as a group at our last next meeting and get an idea of how much work we need to do. If, if what he's gotten is what we want or if we really need to do a lot of work because there will only be two, two weeks between our next meeting and when we're having the big meeting. Right. And I think the thing, I, I don't want to put pressure on him. I think the thing he needs to, that maybe would help him, maybe not, is if we say we don't expect to see the whole draft by August 28th, 29th, 30th. And in fact, if we don't see the whole complete draft till the 1st of October, we're still okay because we send it out and we get comments and we're still done before Thanksgiving, which was our goal. But if we don't see the document until the 1st of November, it will be hard because we won't be able to, we'll be, we'll be up against the deadline. And, and I think, you know, we had originally set a deadline for ourselves. I think we really need to stick to it and not go on too long, except we want to be sensitive to Tom's needs with his health. And so I just, I wouldn't ask him as a Tom, we got all this stuff coming up. I just, it would be great to know what's in his mind as far as when we see a composite draft. Okay. One thing that might happen, um, speaking of events that weren't planned is the county got notified by FEMA Two weeks ago that it had till October 1st to comply with all the theme of various recommend, uh, recommendations that came out of the buy-up uh, lawsuit. And I know Sarah uh, has, well, I, she's communicated with the planning commissioner that we're in for a long fall of having to rewrite a lot of ordinances development ordinances, anything involving wetland areas, flood areas, whatever, whatever for the county. This is something that is quite controversial in Tillamook County. We're gonna have, it, it, her, her message to us was, we're gonna have a crazy fall doing this, responding to the FEMA's requirements. And one of the things that she and I kind of exchanged back is what kinds of things can we delay? And certainly I would not be surprised if our community planning process was delayed Bumped. by months. Bumps. Because it's just, there's only so many people that can do this. She is absolutely consumed right now with the FEMA thing. Um, and she's not only, is it not, it's not just a process of Let's, oh, let's get together and rewrite these ordinances and other kinds of requirements. But there's so much political in the county, especially with the dairymen and the fishermen and others that are just really upset about this. So um, anyways, lots going on there. Yeah. It's important to realize that we're <laughs> not the only thing on her agenda. We knew that, but there's other things have gotten much bigger. Right. Yeah, the other thing is, right. if we know the schedule's changing because of things like that, we should just make people aware in the community, like at the next community meeting when we have our information update presentation, you know, just say, because of the county schedule, our schedule is changing too, it might not be exactly what we said before, blah, 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 blah. But just so that people know that we're not dropping the ball, that we need the um, cooperation. Right. Yeah. So I think those are two. It's I. It's very helpful to know about the FEMA thing, and I think just kind of staying in touch with Sarah and, as Lori says, communicating with people about the FEMA requirement and that people, you know, there's only so many people who can do so much work. And secondly, to just get a broad notion from Tom about when he, with his work, yeah. when he envisions a draft. 
Uh, because um, I think part of what, you know, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Also, I don't know if this guy you might know, but do any of the FEMA rules have anything to do with the golf course or the creek or the bridge? Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. <laughs> those we might need to take into account with our plan. Well, that when this came, you know, when it came up at uh, the other day, last uh, the other day with Sarah, she said, and, and I didn't want to have to get into it only as uh, as about the flooding overlay zone in general uh but she did say then she was going to have a special meetings regarding theme of for each community well the communities that are impacted i mean we're impacted primarily in the golf course area uh, but um you know pacific city is probably the one unincorporated community that is most impacted by yeah. this but she's going to have a lot of individual meetings with communities about this, uh, as well as, of course, just in general, the dairy, dairymen and others. But anyways, yeah, so she's more to come on that. So. Yeah, she she definitely took a deep breath when you said it, like, we can't even go start that conversation tonight. It'll take two meetings to even just des describe it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have to somehow uh, thoughtfully approach Tom about what's, I don't know how to say what, what's his capacity and somehow not have exert pressure on him, but also just understand what's possible for um, development of the draft beyond the vision and values. That's a big right. one. And we need to plan. And I'll just and I'll start drafting some things on the on the some of the purpose statements on the ordinance. I'll also communicate with about you know the and, and maybe I could even go straight to the building department, ask her permission to talk with our, you know, we have a kind of a new head of the building division. In community development and say if we were to change any building standards to help us prepare for a future that's number one in terms of what might be coming down the pike kind of like what lynn's contractor did what would those look like what can we adopt in our community that might be a good place to start i can do that and then i think Lori's point about how do we keep we still keep this you know um, buffer if we're going to have more high density what kinds of things can we require and i think that that may go to some of the other building code standards about where you can put decks how far away from you know your property line that kind of thing so um yeah i think there's things we can do here in the next several weeks unfortunately for this week i'm i can communicate with sarah this week but i can't write and write anything this week that's fine. I think we're I think we're fine. I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I do too. Okay, so Especially we actually knowing where the we have our next meeting the twelfth, and um, Jeff wants me to deliver the agenda for that meeting at the end of this meeting. So, even we just discussed. I think we could we could we could put that on the agenda. Uh, to review draft changes to R1 and R3 ordinances. Right. To to uh, discuss uh, potential building code changes to respond to both uh, the impacts of climate change and to the increase in density within the village, potential increase in density. Um, trying to think of... Uh, we can put down discussing, hopefully, if Tom's ready to uh, reviewing the outline for the whole plan. Uh, we we could put down revisit the timeline that we have as a community to finish things, and hopefully, Sarah will weigh in on that. Um, 
We can just yeah. talk about the agenda for the, the next community meeting. If we're going to have a community meeting end of August, one of the things we're going to want to do on the 12th is kind of start to talk about what we, how we're going to get, what we're going to present and how we're going to get feedback from the community on that. I thought you guys, Lori, you and Rand did a great job of, you know, getting people to fill out those things yeah. and give us a pretty good indication of where they are at with various things. So. Yeah, I think maybe something similar to that. Um, and I think it is going to be important to hear from Sarah on the FEMA impact, because here's what's going to be hard is, well, I'm not going to speculate doom and gloom. <laughs> I'm just going to say, if we lose momentum yeah. when we're this close, it's going to be frustrating. <laughs> I'll summarize in that regard. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what you I know, was... Lynn. You may want uh, on the side, Lynn. You may want to. Uh, I don't know where North Nesquen is on the on the flood map, but uh, I know that there's been some recent, uh, you know, um, changes to that map. But you know, I kind of look at it, and of course, it's right away what sticks out to you is the golf course. Uh, and uh, but I don't know about North Nesta one. No, we do. I mean, um, I do. We when we bought our house, we. I mean, we. There is a flood map. We've seen it. Um, one of the state, one of the geologists, um, or one of the flood people in Oregon told us when we bought our house, you have the highest. You're on the highest piece of ground in Nesta North. That's the good news and the bad. <laughs> Bad news is going to flood anyway. I mean, it, you know, our house is built, <laughs> garage is built to flood. Knock on wood, it doesn't happen. But, but, and again, and the golf course, we're, we're all over the page, which is, it's just more and more wa water all the time. That's the forecast. And, um, yeah. Ron's been doing a real large infrastructure project. And one of the data sets that the science brought is, um, more and more water all the time and that you know this whole room of scientists and they're all just like that's it plan on it <laughs> water win who knows just more and more water all the time so we're we're there um yeah i i yeah i sent skip a copy of sarah's email to the planning commissioners about the impacts of fema good thank you and I, so i sent it to i sent it to skip and said that uh, you know, in particular, they may want to really be following this. And then Sarah mentioned that she was going to have a special meeting on this. And um, so anyways, yeah, I just tried to keep him. And and you guys are dealing with, and you guys meaning the, uh, the golf course, dealing with Waterways, uh, which is a engineering firm that we've worked with in the Watershed Council. And I think Sarah also sent them copies of the new theme of requirements. So should okay. be pretty well the golf course board should be pretty well covered on thank that. you i'll check in with skip on that thank you okay i th i i think i i think i missed one of the things guy was rattling them off and i was scribbling notes so <laughs> I wrote you got them yeah i'll tell you what i have and you can tell me what i don't have so i have a review uh draft review um that's that's not very articulate. R1 and R3. Of R1 and R3. Yes. This, discuss building code changes in response to climate issues. Discuss outline of... And, and, inc and density. And increased density. Okay. Yeah. And increased density. And uh, discuss outline of community plan with Tom. Yeah. Uh, Vision and values update. We need to be prepared to have that be as updated as possible. Uh, so we'll we'll look at that again and see if changes have been made by then through uh, Lori's observations and the definitions area and uh, schedule a special meeting of the schedule of FEMA special meeting of the schedule, a special meeting of the FEMA uh, by Sarah. 
So there was something. Yeah. Also, we wanted to review our time our timeline for completion. Well, I guess that was discuss outline of community plan uh, completion. Uh, or maybe that's two things. How about yeah, two well, things. we want to prepare prepare for the end of August meeting. Yeah. And the lap, that's right. And the lap, so those are two things. One is outline for, one is the document and the other is the work plan for the timeline to completion for the whole thing. And then the agenda for the August community plan meeting. Okay. It would be great if Sarah could attend at least part of that meeting to help us with a realistic timeline. Or yeah. give us nice. well, I think she's gonna plan to be at this this meeting because that's a huge community meeting and it's as she has said many well isn't that our next oh that's our little that's one our community. right but when we do determine the date uh, the week of the 29th the August community plan meeting she's definitely going to be at that one but right. it'd be good if she could be at this one because there's a lot here that's yeah. a lot of substance in that yeah. next meeting the on the 12th it's not in it, um, for the agenda but the next general meeting of the NCAC is before our next committee meeting. The so, 10th, right. So whatever Rand's going to say at that meeting as our summary and update. It has to include all this stuff. So, uh, right. and, and did you, were you here, uh, Guy, when Jeff said that uh, Mark's staying on as president? Oh, no. Yeah, as chair. He changed his mind. He oh, said, wow. I owe it to the community or something. I don't know why. Nice. Oh, that's, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'd, I'd probably prefer one of the parliamentarians just because they're used to putting moving through and Jeff or uh, Mark's kind of like, well, now what what's next? What am I doing here? You know, it's like. Find the groove, Mark, find the groove, you know, but uh, that's good. <laughs> I'm I'm glad he's hanging in there and we don't have to figure out who's next. Uh but I I would like to start cultivating one of those parliamentarians, Michael Beachley or somebody. And Jeff also said that there's somebody that's willing to take his role. Gary Billingsley. But he will need some and he he Jeff hopes that he'll get support from the task force uh, people to so that he doesn't have to do as all of the roles that Jeff played. Yeah, Jeff made yeah. out his list of things and that he does, and it was five pages. No, well, it's five separate <laughs> oh, tasks. Geez. Five separate tasks. I'm sorry. Yeah. So there's oh. a lot to be done. Do we know when he has he told us when he's leaving yet? Well, now that he has Gary, he but he he says even if he's somewhere else, he'll continue to support Gary's position because he doesn't want it to, you know. Gary to be yeah. overwhelmed and yeah. screw things up. So uh, he's committed yeah. even if he moves, but they don't even know where they're going at this point. So but the other thing is yeah, that's I right. to that you have to be a member of the NCAC to be an officer, but you don't have, which he won't be a member because of his residency, but he doesn't have to be a member to be on the task force. Right. So he could support the task force without being a member. Right. So he can continue to be engaged from afar. Okay. Well, that was a lot of stuff, you guys. Good work. Um, I will, I will uh, compose this agenda in a more formal manner than my, my current scribbled notes. And uh, Lynn will cover me and saying you forgot this one Rand, and uh, we'll we'll get it corrected and we'll get that into jeff so it can get published and it will include that there's a meeting our meeting on august 12th and uh out of that meeting we'll have time to schedule a meeting on the 29th or the week of the 29th yep great okay. all right okay good work gang um so good. Let, where's that agenda that tells me what to do next um <laughs> oh yeah um public comments no one's here okay and uh, he wants 
agendas for the 26th also, but I think that that's, he's just going to have to hang in there until we have the meeting on the 12th. Um, yeah. so, and uh, with that, I, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank all right. You all. Great. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Bye.